Mad Max. He's obsessed by all things shiny, transfixed by shadows and in love with light. Max is a slobbering, drooling, biting, barking mess. His owners are being torn apart. Every day I wake up and find a, a dog I've got to really sort of worry about. Can dog trainer Victoria Stilwell shed any light on this crazy canine? Is there anybody in there? Or will Max's bonkers behaviour prove too wacky even for her? Now, a very special record going up for Mr. Max, and the record has to be Cat Stevens and I Love My Dog. I love my dog as much as I love for you. Meet DJ for Diddy you. David Meet Hamilton's me. best friend. Max is a four-year-old Gordon Setter. Previously an army mascot dog, his life was extremely regimented until the Hamiltons took him in three years ago. Now he lives like a lord, much to the exasperation of David's wife, Drina. He can do anything. David doesn't mind whatever he does. Max is allowed to lie on the sofas, drink from the taps, and he doesn't like to be left out of anything. He likes to be lifted into the car. On walks, he either runs amok or runs away. Come on, boy. Come on. Max. On the rare occasions David does tick him off, Max pays no attention. No! Oh, Not that it bothers David. I totally accept his behaviour. It doesn't worry me at all. Max's lordly leanings may be connected to his ancestry. Gordon Setters take their name from the fourth Duke of Gordon, who began breeding them at his Bamshire Castle in Scotland in 1827. The Gordon Setter breed can be traced back to 1620, when it was known as the Black and Fallow Setting Dog. Max's colouring is rare. Their coats are usually black and tan. The sturdiest of all setters, Gordons are thought to be the hardest working of all gun dogs. Their eyesight is exceptional. Bred to see tiny movements invisible to the human eye, they tend to be more light sensitive. Which could go some way towards explaining some of Max's more quirky habits. He's fascinated by surfaces that reflect in any way. It's almost anything that's shiny. His tail starts going, frothing at the mouth, and I don't understand why he does that. Reflections, shadows and bright lights all initiate strange behaviour, which Drina is finding almost impossible to live with. You know, his behaviour is driving us mad. I can't leave anything on the stove. He'll jump up and he can turn the gases on with his paw and cause an accident, and has done. Even the telephone, he tries to jump at that too, and mobiles. You know, nothing is safe and you don't understand it, but it can happen any time. It's not just Max's unpredictable leaping that's difficult to deal with. His relentless slobbering is costing David around £200 a month in dry cleaning bills. You know, a suit goes in every week and there's all these slobber things down the... or down your back where you don't notice it. It's particularly embarrassing when friends come over. Come here, mister, look at this state of you. It's only a shadow, for God's sake. With David at work every day, his wife Drina has to bear the brunt of Max's bizarre behaviour. It's a bit like living with, like, an autistic child or a, somebody with problems. My life daily is is governed by Max's behaviour. And the truth is that when David takes him out for a walk, it's such a relief not to have him in the house. He is affecting my life a lot. So what will top dog trainer Victoria Stilwell make of Mad Max? The thing about being a dog trainer is that you never know what you're going to be up against. I've met a lot of dogs in my life, but this one promises to be particularly intriguing. Victoria wants to observe Max's normal daily routine. Hi, this is David Hamilton. Welcome to the show. So whilst David is presenting his morning radio show, she's arriving at his house. <gasps> Hello. Good morning, Victoria. Oh. Good morning. David's wife, Drina, whisks Victoria through to the kitchen to show her how Max's reflection obsession affects all aspects of his life. It's time for his breakfast, but Max is in a trance. With this bright light, he'll just, just, Max doesn't even hear me. It's just like a, 
a dog who's gone into a sort of world of his own. He'd right. rather have reflections than food. That right. is honestly true. Right. One of Max's other weird ways is proving a problem too. Well, he's never, ever, ever, ever in this house had water from a bowl. Well, how does he drink then? He drinks from the tap. From the kitchen tap, from the bathroom tap, from the uh, tap in the downstairs loo. Where does boy? So when he first came to you, mm -hmm. and you put a bowl of water, water down, he didn't drink. He didn't from drink it. it. No, he didn't drink water. And then one day, well, obviously I turned the tap on, on a regular basis to cook or make tea, and he jumped up and pushed my meat out of the way and drank from the tap. <laughs> Max has two walks a day. David takes him to the park in the afternoon, but in the morning it's Trina's turn, and a gentle stroll is the last thing on Max's mind. He's broken my hand, pulling me over. He yes. broke your hand? Yes. Pulled me into the road and broke my hand. Oh, dear. Given me a black eye for Christmas last year, which is fun. Really. Max's most bizarre behaviour is his peculiar practice at the patio windows. So is this a, a, this, a ritual? This is a ritual. Now, he wants me to open the door so that he will get reflection from it and then he'll, if I sit, he goes berserk now. But, and Max, now he'll start licking and grinding his teeth on the door. Then he'll carry on frothing at the mouth and he licking is the wood. frothing, he's, he's foam, frothing, isn't yeah. He just has some fixation about the door opening and closing and the reflection and the sucking and grinding his teeth on the wood. Then if you let him out... Well, he'll... It's not like he actually wants to go out, no, He doesn't he? want to go out. He just wants the door open so that he can get his fix from whatever he gets from this reflection. Come on then, mister. Let's go for a walkie. With David home from work, Victoria can observe his relationship with Max. David starts by demonstrating the daily debacle of getting him into the car. OK, in you go. He doesn't want to go in. He doesn't want to go in. He wants his daddy to pick him up and put him in. There we go. Oh. In you go, boy. In you go. Has he, has he never jumped in? He has jumped in in the past, but he prefers me to carry him in. That's the way he likes it. Right. That's the way he likes it, and that's the way you do it. Yeah. That's, what he, that's what he likes. I do it. David takes his hapless hound for an hour-long run-around every day. Victoria witnesses the problem he Max. has with him. Max! One day we came to the park here and I lost him for an hour and a half. I looked everywhere. I was extremely worried because I was worried that he might find his way back to a road and right. he's just lethal with roads. Right. And that's the time when I could possibly lose him. Right. Back home, Max's fascination with reflections returns when Drina attempts to cook dinner. The reflection goes against the kitchen uh, units and he starts doing this. And he's obsessed with shiny surfaces like the CD player. He'll, mm. he'll leap at the CD player. We had to put a, you know, something in front of the CD player so he didn't leap at it because it was mm. silver and shiny. Mm. Could you just do the reflection again? Max can't help himself. Until now, nothing has been able to interrupt Max when he's in a full-on reflection frenzy. But Victoria knows how to break the spell. Wow. Victoria's seen enough. She can make her diagnosis. I can tell you what is wrong with Max. And it's a form of compulsive disorder. Humans wow. can suffer from OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, person that just washes their hands all the time. Washing your hands is fine, but when you're washing your hands all the time and it becomes a habit and you can't stop it, then that becomes a disorder. Chasing reflections are fine. Lots of dogs chase reflections. Mm. But when it becomes a habit and when it becomes an obsession, that's when you get the disorder. 
there are different dogs that suffer from different disorders. Right. Um, Bull Terriers, for example, are well renowned to be tail chasers to right. suffer from that. King Charles right. Cavaliers are well renowned to be fly biters, to, to bite at pretend flies. Mm -hmm. but your dog is a light chaser. Your dog is genetically predisposed to have compulsive disorder. Right. So you inherited that. And also, he is overindulged and spoiled rotten. No. Yes. I can't believe that. Yes, and I'm pointing the <laughs> finger at you. <laughs> yes. No, not me. But would that um, account for his, this compulsive disorder? Yes, because he gets attention all the time for it. Whether it's negative attention, still attention. That's David told. So Victoria's mission to crack Max's obsessive compulsive disorder begins. I got this glitter ball because I wanted to illustrate what it must be like in Max's world. Because he's surrounded by reflections and his life is consumed by reflections. This would be his utopia. Wouldn't it? This is his world. It's his world. And, it's, and in a way, it is, it's mesmeric. It is, that's yeah. it. When yeah. you look yes. around at all of these, it is mesmeric. It's very pretty. Yeah. Obsessive compulsive disorder is difficult to treat in humans and dogs. But Victoria has some ideas about how to keep it in check. Every day he's going to be seeing shadows and light. We cannot stop him from seeing lights and shadows because they're part of every day. However, we have to get some kind of way of distracting him when he is in that obsessive licking. Mm. That's why we're going to A, not encourage it, and B, use something direct to stop it. I want to use a buzzword, and the buzzword is enough. And you say it because I think it's a way of getting your attention too. Do you? I think it's an attention-seeking thing. Really? Because when he's licking, when he's salivating, when he's chewing, he gets your attention. Right. But if he doesn't get any of your attention, if each time he chases a reflection, boom, you say enough and out you go, will that change the picture for him? Now I'll show you what I mean. Walk out. Let's go up again. Enough! Walk out. Good boy, when he's following you. Good boy, right out of the room. Good boy. Victoria's distraction technique nips a full-blown slobber fest in the bud. But will it work for Drina? Enough! Gordon Setters are a highly intelligent breed, renowned for being fast learners. Despite his obsessive compulsive disorder, Max proves to be no exception. If he doesn't lick, tell him he's a good boy. Good boy. Good oh, boy. Good boy. Yes, a miracle. Good. I mean, a miracle. I, I can't get over it because I have never been able to draw that dog away from that window for any reason. I, I've even taken tidbits to him and he's not interested. That is a miracle. I am. <gasps> That could go on, that would change my life so much. Next, Victoria will be changing David's life too. No more indulging, it's time to take control. <laughs> Top trainer Victoria Stilwell has come to the rescue of radio DJ Diddy David Hamilton and his wife Drina. She's been teaching them how to deal with their dog's obsessive compulsive disorder. Now it's time to tackle Mad Max's other bad habits. Doting Daddy David allows Max to literally run rings around him. It's got to stop. When you're in a place like this, it's important that your recall, that means calling him back to you, is very, very good. The big mistake people make is that they get so angry when their dog doesn't come back to them, that when the dog finally does come back to them, they tell the dog off. Then the dog thinks, I came back and she told me off. I'm not coming back again. I'm not coming back to that person no. again. No. So yeah. always praise. When he comes close to you, yeah. very good, good boy. boy. Other thing that dogs get really wise to is the only time that you really call them to you is when they're going to be put on the lead and taken home. Yeah. So they associate that with bad news. Yeah. 
So, fool him. Call him back to you, let him go again. Call him back to you, let him go again. Call him back to you, put him on the lead. Yeah. So he never actually knows when he's going to be put on the lead. No. And when he's not. Right. Now, if he's far away, let's yep. do this. Max! <laughs> Walk with me. Walk with me. <laughs> Walking away from him utilises his desire to chase. Right. Also making that loud noise. Now, you, you, yeah. you heard what I was doing. Because yeah. <laughs> that's a little distraction. Yeah. That's something that he never hears. Yeah. Turn around, okay, call yep. his name. Max! <laughs> Call his name. Max! Good boy! Good boy! Alright, Max! Good boy, Maxie! Good boy, Max! Good boy! The only thing is, if I'm in the park all the time going... Yes. Other people in the park are going to think I'm Barbie. Yeah, well, it's just that bit that keeps going... You don't have to do that every time you call him, just if you're having trouble calling him. Good boy! Lovely. David may have his reservations about running through the park like a lunatic, but when it's Drina's turn to take Max out, she doesn't get much choice. So Victoria takes to the back garden to do some walking to heel training. I want to make him feel that my left side, close to me, is a good place to be. And I do that by each time his body comes into an imaginary square by my left side, that he gets a lot of praise, that he gets maybe a treat, but something, he gets a good reward. Now, if his body is not in that imaginary square by my left hand side, I will motivate him more by running. Right. When I move off, I'm going to slap my left thigh twice and give him the heel command. Heel, good boy. Heel, good boy. I'm always going to keep him to my left. Good boy. Heel. Good boy, Max. Yay, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. When training, if the dog starts to pull, you should stand completely still until he stops. But in Mad Max's case, this sparks off another obsessive compulsive moment. He becomes transfixed by the shadows on the grass. He's so totally focused on his tail wagging shadow now. I am waiting for him to focus on me, even if it's for a, for a second. Good boy, that's it. With Max back in the land of the living, Drina can take over. Once he's in the zone, once he's in the box, lots of praise. Come on. Good boy, good boy. He starts to resist a little bit, start running, because that will motivate him again. Come on. Turn into him. He pulls away, turn into him, that's it. He's doing a lot better. That works, doing a lot better. This way, the boy here. Here. Another of Max's exasperating habits is his refusal to drink water from a bowl, meaning David and Drina have to reach for a tap whenever he's thirsty. But this isn't quite as weird as it might seem, if you know why. Victoria has the solution, a running water bowl. Some dogs just don't like drinking from a stagnant bowl. They like the water flowing. And I think that Max is one of those. Good boy! Oh. Wow. So with any luck now, he'll get so attached to this, he won't need us to go to the sink no. and, uh, and he'll drink from no. this all the time. Yeah. Ah. That's unbelievable. Even though the training's beginning to work, Victoria knows there's still more to do. I want you to be able to move around your kitchen without him following you everywhere and him trying to bite the cupboards. To tackle this, Victoria will use a mixture of sound aversion and body blocking. Whenever you see him go for, for a reflection, which he will do, you put yourself in between the reflection and him and you make the noise. Bam! Oh, I see. OK. I see. Am I doing it next All right, time? go for it now, I'll do David. Next time, shall I? That is going to okay, be generous. That's it. Lovely. Put yourself good in between boy, the thing boy, and that's boy. it. Bam. Body blocking denies Max the chance to get close to the source of his fervor, and the bat noise interrupts this bad behavior. Now you've got to be tougher, tougher. Bam. That's it. Fantastic. 
Now, Flea, what I liked, what you did then with your body blocking was perfect. You yeah. didn't give him a bat because no, he hadn't gone through he hadn't it, but you blocked. That, hadn't quite gone that far, but so you, I didn't so give you, him a bat. So you just did a body block, which is fabulous. But Max isn't going to make it easy for Victoria. If deprived of its normal outlet, a dog with a compulsive disorder will often refocus on something else. Has he done this before? I have to say, no, this, this is a is, first. He's gone into a complete... Ah! Thank you. Thank you. This is a first, yes. So you that, do exactly that the same thing. Uh, 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 uh. It's my carpet, I reclaim it. Not yours. Good boy, Max. Good boy, that's Thank good. You. Good boy. We don't want any more of that. Thank you. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I think he has transferred. Well, I'm sure. That's, he hasn't done this as much before, has he? I've never seen him do it for that long. Max knows not to mess with Victoria, but how will David and Drina get on without her? <coughs> Victoria normally returns to monitor a dog's progress after two weeks, but because of Max's unusual condition, Drina and David have two months to train him. You'd like to pull, wouldn't you? Drina's starting to enjoy a walk across the common. Max's obsession with all things shiny seems to be disappearing. No, he's not going for it now. And those French windows are starting to look less tempting. He did it. Finally, Victoria's back to see how they've been getting on. Hello. Victoria, Victoria. Hi. 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 Nice Welcome to back. see you. Dare I ask, how has his behaviour with the reflections been going? He's been a lot better, hasn't he? Yeah, he has actually stopped uh, slobbering and slathering now, so good. we can actually have people around now. Very good. So he's not nibbling, because th th that was all worrying me, that he was chewing at the wood at the door. Is he still no, doing he's that? Not, no, he's not doing that anymore, because the reason it got to that point was because I opened the door mm -hmm. and then he got excited and hence the dribbling. We don't get to that point now, no. because I just walk away and ignore it. Don't With the it. slobbering gone, my cleaning mm. bills have decreased yeah. slightly, which I'm rather <laughs> pleased about. Okay. Max's obsessive reflection licking had been having harmful side effects on the kitchen cabinets too. He hasn't, honestly, honestly, has not chewed or licked since you were here last. Really? We just don't have it. As soon as he starts, every time. We're much calmer around him, he's calm around us, and we're calmer around each other. Walking Max had been a nightmare, but now he's like a different dog. He still pushes his lap a bit by, you can see he's pulling a little bit now, but I'll just stop him immediately and say, heel. And we start again, Good boy. and he does it again, and it's working very well. And his progress is fantastic. I'm very, very, very pleased with this. Well done, because that's hard work. When I work with a dog that has these kind of disorders, I never know how it's going to turn out. But I'm really pleased with Max's progress. The change that I've seen from when I last came here is, is massive. So that, that really does make me feel very happy.